let's pretend for a moment that all of humanity, all seven billion of us, are going to watch this video. Ah. What would you say to us? <sighs> Love one another. Be kind to one another. Um, treat others exactly the way you would like to be treated. And and these this is how we get, you know, all that mercy and justice and stuff. You don't oppress somebody if you're trying to treat them the way you want to be treated. So, yeah. I if think I, that's in every holy book. <laughs> in different phraseology. In different, different ways, but it's in, it's in all the holy books. Take care of each other. Don't, don't hurt other people. Don't exploit. Don't exploit. Yeah. Do right occupation in, in the Buddhist tradition. Um, so making weapons is not a right occupation. No matter how profitable it is. Exactly. Because weapons kill. That's what they're for, is to kill people. Or animals. Or, you know. If I, I, if I could grant you any superpower, one that you've heard of, or one that you make up on the spot, hmm. which one would you request? Superpower. Hmm. The power of giving empathy. Of having empathy yourself? No. Or letting other others. people be able to have empathy? Giving it to others. You know, I touch you, you become empathetic. empathetic. Great. Yeah. I like that one. What's your favorite movie? Forrest Gump. Why? Because it reminds me of my life. His girlfriend. That, oh, that reminds yeah. me of me. You have somebody like that in your life? No, it was me. <laughs> no, I mean, you have somebody like him in your life? Not really. Not really, but, um, no. But you ran around and tried to be Patty Hearst in the 60s and like that? Well, not Patty Hearst, but um, I was in all the demonstrations and, you know free love and all of that stuff and drug many drugs many 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 drugs good drugs um and bad drugs both but yeah it's it's Forrest Gump is is like my favorite who are your heroes one is Martin Luther King Jr. why he did really what he didn't want to do regardless of the fact that he didn't want to do it or that he knew it was dangerous but because it was right because kinda it was like the right what, thing to do. Kind of like you're descri describing your own calling, how you were like averse to it, but you felt impelled anyway. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, yeah, he really didn't want to to put himself out like that, but he did, and, um, and we are grateful. Um, there are a number of leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. that, that I find heroic. Um, but also... You want to name a couple more? Um, well, um, Bishop Oscar Romero from El Salvador. I'm not familiar with him. Tell us about him briefly. Uh, again, it was someone who... He, he was the bishop um, in, in a country where the class difference was... Well, like it's getting to be here now. Um, very, very dramatically different. The rich were extremely rich and the poor were extremely poor and extremely oppressed. And he was himself, you know, well off and, and well cared for because he was a, priest. a prince of the church. And, um, and he began to understand what was going on with, with his people. And he began to fight against the government for his people. And he was assassinated because of his his actions as um, part of their civil war not even not really as part of their civil war he was it wasn't that kind of fight it was fighting for rights not fighting with weapons he was not uh, involved well the, in the the government has killed many intellectuals during their civil war uh, yeah but this was not this was an entirely different um, I have a number of books up here about okay. him if you'd okay. like <laughs> um, uh, Nelson Mandela. Um, again, 
Same thing. The same thing. He stuck to his guns, even though it cost him a quarter century in the can. Exactly. Um, okay. You know, they're, they're, these are the people that, that I admire and that I would like to be able to be like, um, who stand up for what they believe, for what they know to be right and what they know to be true, no matter what it costs them. That, that happens a lot to pastors who believe in social justice, um, who don't think the status quo is the way to live. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed because my congregation agrees with me. And they called me because... They, um, wanted, somebody they wanted somebody who thought who was on your wavelength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very fortuitous. Very, very. I am very grateful that this is where I am. Is there anything that I've neglected to ask you that you think bears mentioning at this point in time? Hmm. I found this. What's inside the shadow box in the parking lot. Um, a couple of years ago and I keep it on my desk to remind me it's a bullet it's a bullet it's a 22 it's an unfired bullet. it's an unfired bullet it was in the parking lot um, one Sunday morning I found it and it reminds me that um, the the battle between right and wrong good and evil whatever is is very real and people really die outside um, because of choices made and um, I want to make a difference in the choices that people make I want to be an example for people so that they don't have to make choices that include bullets and you know whether it's through church or just because you know I'm not a bad person and I think they can do better um, that's that works too you know, I, I don't believe that um, they have to like come here <laughs> or they have to be converted or whatever. Um, I believe that people are, um, whatever faith path they choose is the right faith path for them. Um, there's more than one way. And uh, some way or other will lead people, especially the young folks around here, away from this path onto one that is life-giving instead of death-dealing. That's, that's why I serve. Thank you so much for meeting with me. You've been very gracious and kind with your time and energy.